The FAA may be taking action to delay SpaceX's Falcon 9 operations due to recent issues with its second-stage rocket. However, this does have an impact on the Starship schedule. In other developments, NASA has formed a groundbreaking partnership with the Korean Space Agency, or CASA, demonstrating the growing international partnership in space exploration. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency, or ISA, is preparing to launch a special satellite aimed at reducing space debris. There's a lot to talk about, so let's dive into it all on today's episode of NR Studio. At 11.17 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on September 28th, SpaceX successfully launched a Falcon 9 rocket with a Dragon spacecraft from Space Launch Complex 40. The mission carried two astronauts to the ISS, not only to maintain operations, but also to provide support to two stranded Starliner astronauts due to technical issues. The launch went well. The booster, B-1085, successfully landed at Landing Zone 1, marking its second successful recovery. And as Dragon continued its journey after separating from the second stage, and after more than a day of flight, it successfully docked with the ISS. This achievement received a lot of positive responses. Elon Musk proudly announced that Dragon had reached the space station. As NASA Administrator Bill Nelson wrote, Congratulations to NASA and SpaceX on the successful launch. We live in an exciting time of exploration and innovation in the stars. Looking forward to the final discoveries Crew-9 will make on the station. This is the ninth successful Crew Dragon mission under NASA's commercial crew program, the tenth including demonstration missions, with a perfect success rate. Overall, this is SpaceX's 15th Crew Dragon mission, which is an impressive achievement. It's also NASA's second support mission this year after Crew-8 in March. Combined with Axiom-3 and Polaris Dawn, this is Crew Dragon's fourth mission this year, setting a new record. SpaceX also has Fram 2 later this year to continue this momentum. It's interesting to note that this mission only carried two astronauts. The remaining two seats were reserved for Butch Wilmore and SUNY Williams, who stayed on the ISS due to issues with the Starliner. In addition, this flight also delivered SpaceX's new spacesuits for their return next year. The Dragon has proven to be the most important vehicle for U.S. spaceflight operations today. Show your appreciation for its importance by responding to SpaceX Dragon in the comments. But back to the mission. There are still issues that need attention. Most notably, the Falcon 9 second stage experienced problems during operation, although the exact cause is still unknown. I suspect it could be the engine or the fuel. In a tweet, the second stage landed safely in the ocean but outside the target area. Typically, the Falcon 9 second stage carries a payload to a designated altitude. After the payload is separated, the second stage completes its mission by performing a controlled burn and disintegrates in the atmosphere. However, during this flight, it appears the second stage failed to reach the desired altitude, forcing it to turn around and splash down into the ocean. The fact that the craft landed outside the designated area also suggests a problem with the engine or fuel system. This is the second problem with the Falcon 9's second stage in less than three months. The previous problem occurred during a Starlink mission on July 11. After this incident, SpaceX temporarily halted Falcon 9 launches saying, we will resume launches once we have a better understanding of the root cause. But again, we have to appeal to the FAA. After the July incident, the FAA suspended Falcon 9 operations for 15 days to investigate. And in August, when a Falcon 9 booster had a landing issue, the FAA again suspended operations to investigate. Given this history, it's likely the FAA will halt Falcon 9 operations again to investigate this latest issue, even if the Crew-9 mission was overall a success. The FAA always seems to give SpaceX a hard time. Not only has it repeatedly delayed Falcon 9 operations, but it recently announced penalties against SpaceX for regulatory violations during a previous Falcon 9 launch, thanks to the fact that the launch did not pose any safety issues. When we look at Starliner, which has faced numerous technical challenges, we don't see the same level of interference from the FAA. This situation is unacceptable because the Falcon 9 is the primary support vehicle for America's operations on the ISS. Looking at the recently released data on SpaceX's first quarter orbital payloads, it's clear that without SpaceX and the Falcon 9, the United States would be lagging behind China in the space race. I think if this had happened without the bureaucratic delays, 
America's dominance in space exploration would have been much greater. Unfortunately, the country's progress has been hampered by stagnant bureaucracy. Not only is the Falcon 9 a problem, Starship has also faced unnecessary delays imposed by the FAA. Flight 5 was pushed back to November for a number of questionable reasons. Despite criticism from SpaceX, Elon Musk, and even members of Congress, the FAA seems unwilling to reconsider its decision. This not only impacts SpaceX, but also major American projects, including Artemis. Time is running out for human lunar missions, and Starship needs more launches to ensure continued operations. However, FAA regulations continue to slow its progress. With NASA's plans at stake, China is making rapid progress in its space program, further narrowing the gap with the United States. It is troubling that NASA and the government are still allowing the FAA to act as a barrier. In the near future, I expect the FAA to issue a statement regarding the recent Falcon 9 incident. I hope this delay is short-lived and the Falcon 9 can return to service and achieve new milestones. If you support SpaceX, show your support by commenting and don't stop below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's development journey. Now we see an exciting update on the collaboration between NASA and CASA. On September 19, NASA and the New Korea Aerospace Agency, CASA, signed a joint statement to advance cooperation. According to a NASA statement, potential areas of cooperation include lunar to Mars architecture, space life sciences and medical operations, lunar surface science, antenna utilization, Korean space, and future activities in low Earth orbit. During the signing ceremony, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said that based on years of cooperation on Earth and in space, we are proud to significantly expand our partnership with the Republic of Korea and its new space agency. Additionally, ASHIC Administrator Yong Din Yoon said the signing of the joint statement marks a significant moment in opening a new chapter for the Republic of Korea and U.S. Aerospace Alliance. This is a significant opportunity for Korea to become a responsible spacefaring nation so that humanity can continue its scientific discovery and pave the way for the future. One of the major areas of collaboration between NASA and CASA involves Korea's request to build a solar wind observatory at Lagrange 4, or L4, the point between the Sun and Earth. Future discussions may link this plan to NASA's Artemis program. NASA also has ambitious goals including planning to land the first robot on the moon by 2032. This collaboration is certainly interesting, and it will be interesting to see if SpaceX plays a role in that initiative. Now to Europe, the European Space Agency, or ESA, is developing a special satellite launch plan. ESA recently awarded a contract to European technology group Deimos to develop the Reentry Assessment Container, or DRACO. This spacecraft is upon re-entry, the capsule will deploy a parachute and as it descends, will send back valuable data collected by Draco's four cameras and 200 sensors before being lost in the ocean. Space Safety Chief Holger Krag said the science of re-entry is a key part of designing the destruction effort. We need to better understand what happens when satellites burn up in the atmosphere and validate our re-entry models. That's why the unique data collected by Draco will help guide the development of new technologies to build more fragmented satellites by 2030. The initiative has significant potential because it provides a better understanding of how and under what conditions satellites or their payloads burn up in orbit. This knowledge is crucial to reducing the ever-growing amount of space debris. In addition, I hope the ISA can work with SpaceX because the company also has plans to collect and dispose of space debris with its giant spacecraft. While the two methods are different, I think they could form a very good combination to ensure safe space travel. We look forward to seeing if this collaboration can become a reality. As folks gear up for today's episode, thank you so much for listening and see you in the next video.